This video shows you how the Boston Celtics have bounced back, as they've got an 8-1 record in April. However, after jumping out to an 8-3 start on the year, the Seas had eight separate losing streaks of at least two games, but suddenly, they've won six in a row and shot up to the number four seed in the East. So why were they so inconsistent before this month, and what have they done to prove people wrong who wrote them off? Also, stay tuned to find out the secret weapons that are helping the Seas dominate and how dangerous they'll be in the playoffs. Before we continue, only 20% of you watching this video right now are subscribed, so if you like consistent NBA rankings, predictions, and stories, then you found the right place. Quick comment or shout out to Somto Kid, who thinks the Clippers should stay underrated because of the pressure getting to them last playoffs. Definitely an intuitive take you gave there. Next video shout out question is on its way. In April, Tatum's having arguably the best stretch of his entire career, and Jalen Brown just dropped 40 at Staples Center, but even though they're currently peaking at the perfect time, we can't ignore the main reasons for why Boston wasn't living up to expectations through the first three quarters of this season. The C's role players have started to play better lately, and the return of Marcus Smart plus the shockingly valuable sophomore Romeo Langford have certainly helped. However, something that's really hurt Boston over the course of 2021 is the loss of Gordon Hayward. With all the team's injuries, COVID protocols, and up-and-down play from Kemba, the team could have certainly used Hayward's elite scoring, or at least someone else to fill his void. Unfortunately, President Danny Ainge failed to act on moving Hayward in a sign-and-trade, and it's rumored that the Indiana Pacers offered to give the Celtics Miles Turner and Doug McDermott. Gordon was a consistent source of offense when he was healthy, averaging over 18 points and four dimes, and he was that consistent X-factor that the Celtics could count on game in, game out, when their top players were having an off night. Apparently, Ainge demanded that Pacer president Larry Bird included TJ Warren in that deal in addition to Turner and McDermott while only giving up Gordon Hayward. You can imagine how those negotiations went. So, the Celtics lost a former All-Star in free agency for nothing due to Ainge's greedy hand. The top three DPOY candidate Miles Turner could have really helped the Celtics, and if Boston's front office would have simply pulled the trigger on that deal, they could have been sitting at the top of the East right now. Instead, they're fourth, six games back at the third seed. Before they traded for Evan Fournier, Boston was the only team in the NBA to have fewer than five players averaging over 10 points per game. And here's another stat that signifies the inconsistent offense the Celtics receive outside of Tatum and Brown. And Boston wins, Kemba averages 21.1 points, 3.9 boards, and 5.1 dimes per game, while in losses, he's averaging a measly 16 points on an underwhelming 36% from the field and 29% from three. So this Celts team lives and dies off how well cardiac Kemba plays. He has been healthy as of late though, which I'll touch on later on. But quickly, the last reason for Boston's downfall before the month of April was their decline on the defensive end. The Celtics were the second-ranked team in the NBA in terms of points allowed in 2019-20. This season, they've fallen all the way down to number 10. The odd part about that drop-off is that the Celtics didn't have any defenders leave the team in the offseason. In fact, they arguably upgraded defensively with the emergence of Grant Williams and Robert Williams III in the front court. So, the reason for such a massive defensive decrease can be chalked up to two things, coaching and defensive effort. At least for over a long stretch of games, Brad Stevens hasn't found good enough defense of sets to keep his team engaged enough to get the stop, but here's how Boston's turned around their season and have currently won six straight games. Their win streak was kept alive in the Mile High City as the Beantown boys went on a 31-3 run to beat the contending Denver Nuggets, which was before Murray's tragic injury. But what many people forgot when they came to the conclusion that the Celtics had massive issues this year is that Tatum and Brown are still figuring it out. The one-two punch is still maturing with every game of experience. Tatum's become a much better passer this year as he's setting career highs and assists per game, and he and Brown have combined for 50.2 points per game, the highest total the combos put up by far in their four seasons together. You can't forget that given these two have a combined nine years of pro experience, Tatum just turned 23, Brown's not even 25 yet, so from their body language to the words they choose to motivate their teammates, that's also something developing in their game. Speaking of motivation though, that's exactly what the Celtics have themselves right now because the entire NBA universe, at least here on YouTube, completely wrote them off. 
The screenshots you're seeing right now are videos that combine for nearly a million views. My point is, there's a pretty good chance that top coaches or players within the Celtics organization caught eye of one or two of those videos and used it as fuel to their fire. Good on those YouTubers from Rusty to Andy Hoops and the rest for highlighting the problems of that team because they may have created a green monster in these fresh looking Celtics. In all seriousness, here's how Boston's two top players have stepped up in April which has made the team look like the contenders they were expected to be. Despite struggles with COVID that have forced him to take an inhaler before the game, Jason's averaging 29 points, 9 rebounds, and 3.4 dimes, while putting up shooting splits of over 50-40-90. JT's been recovering from his symptoms recently, but it's clear that contracting the virus had a big impact on him. But on the bright side, after 12 weeks of fighting it, Tatum says he's closer than ever to getting back to normal. After Boston's one-point win against the Blazers, Tatum said to report, Porter's quote, I for sure feel better now than I did a month ago. And that was clear after Tatum drained this stone cold dagger in that outing against Portland. It's a two Tatum. Tatum off the bounce, takes a three, buries it. Big time shot by Jason Tatum. In six games already this month, Jason's dropped at least three three-pointers, which included a 53-point beasting in an overtime win against a Minnesota team that fought hard. From smooth pull-ups to deep-range daggers, Tatum's finding the ruthless scoring rhythm that he had in the bubble last year. Meanwhile, JT's right-hand man Jalen Brown has been the steady hand for the green and white all season. Over the last month, Brown's casually put up 24 points, six boards, three dimes, along with a steal and a block, on shooting splits of 48, 41.7, and 70.2. His defense has been the best it's been all season right now, as when he broke out the gates to start this year, his effort on this end simply didn't match his offensive output. But since March 10th, Jalen's improving his defensive rating by three points compared to what it had been throughout the entire season. The dominant offensive creation mixed with the elite help defense that Brown provides when he's fully engaged makes the Beantown boys a team that no one would want to play in a seven-game series. Before outlining the Celtics' fate in the 2021 playoffs, let's look at Boston's depth. Their backup center, the offensive rebounding specialist Tristan Thompson, is playing the same role that he had in the 2016 Finals, and since getting back from his left calf strain, Marcus Smart has played the Gordon Hayward role as the team's fourth option. The sophomore Romeo Lankford has had a shockingly crucial impact as well, as since the Indiana Hoosiers product returned from injury, the Celtics have regained their reputation as a top five defensive team in basketball. Since his season debut on April 4th, Romeo has led all Celtic players in defensive rating, but the biggest revelation for the Celtics this year has been the growth of their starting center, Robert Williams III. Since Robert made his debut in the starting lineup, Boston has had the fifth best record in the NBA. The 6'8 athletic five-man's been the versatile, paint-protecting presence that Coach Brad Stevens has been desperately looking for. As since becoming a starter, Rob's put up two blocks per game, so I'm excited to see if he can keep it up in the playoffs. His defensive prowess has far outperformed that of Daniel Tice and Tristan Thompson. And based off how Williams fits in, it's evident that Boston was craving for an energetic, playmaking, lob-catching monster like RW3. So with Kemba Walker healthy and finally playing like the all-star that Danny Ainge paid him to be, in addition to those factors I just mentioned, can the Celtics get back to the Eastern Conference Finals? I need to see if they're not going to slide to another two-game losing streak before making that claim. And with the top-heavy Eastern Conference with strong contenders like the Nets and Bucks, Boston still has a lot more ground to make up. But still, if I was Mike Budenholzer or Steve Nash, I'd want to be on the opposite end of the playoff bracket as this star-driven Boston squad. You can't forget about Evan Fournier, who's barely played with the Celtics due to injury, but the former Magic player's averaging 19 points per game this season. So maybe Boston's becoming less reliant on Kemba Walker, maybe their young stars have finally grown up, and maybe this was Danny Ainge's master plan all along. For next video shout out, are the Celtics legit contenders? This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.